Hi, this is CTS 560 Computational Molecular Science Online and Professor Zygmunt again. What I'd like to do today in this video is show you how to use a program called Gauss View to build a molecule, save an input file, and prepare to run the molecular properties program called Gaussian. So, just as usual, let's go back and make sure that the VPN client is running so that we can have access to the servers behind the VU firewall and then run the NX player for Windows. And so just as I did before, I'll make my connection to the S11 machine. Of course, yours will be a different node. So once I make a connection to the machine here, I create a new session, the new genome virtual desktop. And I'm in. Now I have access to the machine in the same way that I would if I were sitting at the console. Uh, I want to open up a terminal. This is now, I'm on the machine, S11. Yours will say M1 or M2 or M3. And in order to build a molecule to run Gauss View, it does not run on the individual computational nodes, like M1, M2, M3, and in my case, S11. What I have to do is make a secure shell connection. The minus Y is important for image processing reasons. And I'm going to go to a node on our system called N0, on which the graphics program Gauss View is running. But before I do that, let me also take a look at my file structure here using a simple Unix command called list, or ls. And when I do that, it shows all of the files and all of the directories that are in my home directory. Uh, and of course, I have many because I've been doing lots and lots of different calculations. What I have done, though, is I have created a directory that's called CTS 560 because that's my course. And within this, ls minus l, uh, ls by itself just lists the files and directories and I don't have anything there. ls minus l will list the length of the files and the date that they were created or were last modified. So you can see I still have nothing in this directory. Uh, you can create a directory if you want uh, by the name CTS 560, but you don't really need to. I do this because I have so many other directories uh, in my account. But you can just use the following command after you log into N0, mkdir, which stands for make directory. And since I'm going to show you how to build a diatomic oxygen molecule, which is one of the things that you have to do for your homework assignment, I, I'll just make directory and I'll call it O2. All right. What is this crazy thing? OK. Then now I can change to that directory. But first, let me do an ls minus L again. And now you can see I have a directory created on July 9th at this time. And if I type CD, which means change directory, O2, then I go into that directory. And now you can see the prompt shows that I'm logged into N0, but I'm on, uh, I'm in directory O2. And I suggest that you create a new directory for every different molecule on which you do calculations because it'll help you keep your files straight. You're going to accumulate a lot of files over the next few weeks on your machine. OK, so once I'm in, now I'm going to run a program called Gauss View, GV, with an ampersand. The ampersand runs this in the background, so if I wanted to, I could still type in other commands in my terminal window. All right, all these windows open up. This original window with the Gauss View 3.0 name on it will disappear. But now I have a new window. Don't show this message again. There we go. I have a new window here. I'm going to go to the bottom right-hand corner and left-click to resize it, make it a little bit larger. And then the way that I build a molecule is one of the ways is I go to this element fragment here and click on it, and it will display the periodic table. And so I'm going to create an oxygen atom. So I click on O, and I have different choices. I can put into the window an oxygen atom, or a double bonded oxygen, or an oxygen with two single bonds. And that's the default. So I'm going to choose that. So I will go over to my blue screen and just click on there. And it creates what you recognize as a water molecule. The white atoms are hydrogens. 
the red atom is an oxygen. And that's not what I want, but that's a good starting place. Now I'll go back and select an oxygen atom. And what's interesting about that is if I click on one of the hydrogens, it gets replaced by an oxygen, another red atom. So I'm almost to where I want. Uh, I'd like to have the two oxygens without the hydrogen. So if I go up here to the Gauss View main window, there are a number of different options here. One of them with a little X is delete atom. So if I click on that and then go into my screen down here and click on the white atom, it gets rid of it. So now I have just O2. That's what I want. Now, uh, it's not really clear what the distance is, and I would like to pick a reasonable distance between those atoms to start my calculation because the program will refine that and will find the equilibrium distance. So if I click on the, what you could see was the modify bond tool, if I now click on the two atoms, one and two, then I get another window that comes up that tells me what the interatomic distance is. And it's, it's set to 1.32. There's some kind of a default in the program that knows some reasonable distances. If you remember last week's assignment, we found that that equilibrium distance was about 1.25 or so thereabouts. So I'm going to, just for fun, I'm going to grab the slider bar and change it to 1.25, uh, 1.24. If I move it just a little bit to the right, it should make it 1.25. Or I can go into the window and just type 1.25 and then click OK. So now if I go back to the, uh, there's a question mark tool, which is good. It's an inquire tool. And I like to click on that because it can tell me bond distances without even opening up any other window. If you look in the bottom left panel, it says 1.25 is the distance between the first oxygen and second oxygen atom. So that's, that's reasonable. It's a good place to start. Now, uh, once I've created the molecule, I might want to rotate it and look at it. So if I click somewhere else on the blue screen, the numbers go away. And if I left click and drag, you can see the molecule rotates. And how quickly this happens in real time will depend on your internet connection and what other kinds of calculations might be running on this machine at the same time. So it can be somewhat slow, but you can see here it will rotate. And that's my left click. Now if I right click when I move the mouse, then I will be able to rotate it. And if I, if I move the cursor up and down, I can resize it to make it look larger by pulling down or smaller by going up. So there are a number of tools in order to visualize and rotate these molecules, and you will be using many of them. But let's assume I've got the molecule the way I want, and now I want to prepare an input file to do a calculation to find what the equilibrium distance would be. My guess was 1.25 angstroms, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. So I go to Calculate, and I click Gaussian, because that's the name of the program that we will be using to do these calculations. And what pops up is a setup window. Now, we're going to start from the left and successively click these tabs and move to the right. Job type, what you're going to do is an optimization plus a frequency calculation. Sometimes we'll just do energies. Sometimes we'll just do optimizations. But in this case, let's do opt plus freak. And you can see the keyword at the top of the screen now displays some information. Uh, we optimize to a minimum, calculate force constants, never. We're not going to do that here. We just leave the defaults. Now, one of the other keywords that I want you to get in the habit of putting in, pop equals full, we'll do a full population analysis uh, of the electrons in the system. So we put that in place. Now we move over to method. OK, method, ground state, that's right. hartree fock what I'm going to do is do a molecular mechanics calculation, which is, and then there are several different molecular mechanics uh, options and the UFF, the universal force field, is the one that is the default and the one that I want, want you to use in the homework. So you'll use that UFF. Uh, charge zero, it's a neutral molecule, but you'll see in the homework assignment that we actually want the triplet spin state. The singlet spin state, if you look at those options, that's where all the electrons are paired up. So that they're, uh, a spin up electron is paired with a spin down electron and uh, ev there's no extra electrons. But in a triplet state, which is what the diatomic oxygen molecule wants to be in, there are two electrons that are, whose spins point in the same direction, and thus they're not paired with an oppositely oriented spin. 
So we want to use that. Now title, I can enter my title and I'm going to call this O2 triplet op optimization uh, and then I'm going to call it UFF because that's the method that we're using, the universal force field method of molecular mechanics. All right, link zero. There are a couple of things here. The checkpoint file is the main uh, binary results file, and it's always good to have this. The title that I'm going to use eventually uh, will look like this O2, and I'm going to use underscore UFF and dot CHK is the suffix we want to use for a checkpoint file. So I would recommend that when you do this, you pick the molecule name and then an underscore and then the method that's being used. Also, in the machine that you'll be using, there are two processors. It's a dual processor machine, so you want to edit the percent n proc to be two. That pretty much takes care of it. The percent memory is how much memory is being allocated for this job, and that should be plenty for this. General, there's one option that's the default, and it's called right connectivity, and I like to deselect it. Uh, it's not really necessary. And then these other options, guess and NBO, and salvation. For now, we'll just use the defaults. So now we're ready to uh, finish saving the input file. We're going to click Submit because this Gaussian uh, setup window actually would allow us to start the calculation. But it tells us here before we submit the job, we have to save the input file. Would you like to save it? Yes, save. And it asks us for a file name. You'll see in the top window that it's in my O2 directory, which is good because that's the directory I was in when I started the Gauss View program. File name, again, I'll use the O2 underscore UFF, UFF, uh, and dot, and it will add, it will add dot com because the file tape, the file type is star dot com. So it will add dot com to that. That should be fine. I will save it. Okay, now, here's, this is very important. Submit the following file to Gaussian. We will always click Cancel at this point. You see the input file name is o 2 uffcom but we're going to cancel because we don't want to run the job on the N0 node. That node uh, is being used by lots of other people to run the Gauss View program. Uh, all the people in the course and, and students uh, that are doing research with me as well. So we're going to click Cancel. And what that does, now we can cancel out of this window, the file has already been saved. So let's go back to our terminal window. And now if I do ls, I see I've got a file. ls minus l gives me the uh, approximate length of the file in bytes, and then the name of the file when it was created or modified. So o2 underscore uff.com is there. Now, in order to take a look at this file and make any other changes that we might need to make, let me use the gedit text editor. Gedit o2 underscore uff.com. And then if I do that, what will happen is a window will pop up, and it's a very simple text editor. So I can review the checkpoint file name, I can review the number of processors, and one other thing that you really can't do in the other window, go down after the pound sign and just put in P. P stands for profuse, and it means the output file that we generate will have lots of output in it. You can see after that there's a optimization and frequency calculations are being run. UFF is the method. Pop equals full does a full population analysis. There's a blank line, then my title, and a 0, 3. Uh, the 0 has to do with the charge. The charge of the molecule is 0. And 3 is reflects the fact that I picked a triplet calculation, 3, 4, triplet. And then the next two lines indicate the atoms that are involved in a special code that the UFF program uh, uses, and finally the bond distance of 1.25 angstroms. So now I want to save this. I've made a change, so I save it, and then I will uh, close the X. Now I can go back and look at my window, ls minus l, and you can see that with the gedit program saved the original version and puts a little tilde on the end in case I need to go back and look at that. Uh, but the one I really want is the o2 underscore uff.com. So, at this point, we've created the input file, we've built the molecule using Gauss View, saved the input file, and in order to run Gaussian, the next step is just to log out, or LO, uh, of the, I'm sorry, exit is probably the better command to use, to get out of the N0 machine, and you'll see what happens is, oops, it doesn't work. 
Why is that? How come it doesn't show that I've logged out of it? Because Gauss View is still running. So I need to go up to Gauss View and click the X to shut the Gauss View down and because Gauss View was being run on the N0 machine. So it didn't want to let me log out of N0 until I closed the Gauss View program. Now it finally says connection to N0 closed and I'm back to my machine that I logged in on. And at this point, we are ready now to run the Gaussian calculation. I'll save that information for the next video.